4. The blessings of the earth is at the mercy of your word practice. Practice God's word and you will see that it is good to live on this earth. All the blessings. Amen? But we need to seek deep in the world to bring out our heritage. That is why we are looking at unveiling our breakthrough heritage in the world. Everything we are looking for is in the world. Everything. Are you looking for healing? The answer is in the world. Are you looking for prosperity? The answer is in the world. Are you looking for relationship? The answer is in the world. Are you looking for safety? It's in the world. Peace. Every of man's inheritance is in the world. You can find it in the Bible. But it is unfolded when you practice it. Hello? Look at Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 28, verse 1 to 13. Our anchor scripture for the month, Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 13, make us to understand that all these blessings will come and overtake us if only we were hacking to the word of the Lord. Can you say that? Everything, if you read it from verse 3 to verse 13, everything you are looking for is packaged there. But the answer is in verse 1 and 2. If only you will obey, you will do what God says. You will do what he says, you will enjoy the blessings he commands. Tell your neighbor, stop punishing yourself. Start obeying God. Hello? Why? If you are not walking in obedience to God's word, you will not receive what you are expecting. Your expectation shall be disappointed. All the answer to the challenges of your life, the answer is in the word of God. All your inheritance is in the world. Acts 20, 32. It's in the world. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. He's able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. According as his divine nature has given to us how many things? Or how many things? Now, if he has given to us all things, why am I in lack? Why am I in need? Why are things not working? If he has given, he didn't say he will give you. He said he has what? Given to us. How many things? All things. All things that pertains to life and godliness. But he said through the knowledge of him. That's what the knowledge. Can I tell you something? If you will care to pay the price to study his word, you will receive your desire cheaply. If you will care to pay the price, if you will care to pay the price to study the word, you will receive the blessing. Hello, somebody. I see somebody here coming back with the testimony of his desire. All you need to do is just, Lord, where, show me where this answer is in the Bible. You want to get married? The answer is in the Bible. Hello? There is what to do for what you desire to be delivered to you. The devil is not strong. When the devil hears the word of God, sees the word of God, he clears off the way. Amen? When Jesus said in Luke chapter 5 to Peter, cast the net to the water for a drought, Satan clear off the way and all the fish is gathered. The moment he obeyed, Luke chapter 5 from verse 1 to 6, when they have this done, Satan cleared off. The stagnation was broken. The fish is gathered. Today, as you begin to obey God's word, every stagnation shall be over in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. However, please take note that we need to understand what the word is saying for it to produce. The Bible is closed. You need to understand it for it to be open. If I, just as he said to Abraham in Genesis chapter 13, 13 to 14, as far as your eyes can see, eastward, westward, northward, southward, to thee will I give thee. In fact, it's the same thing with the Bible. As far as your eye can see in scripture. That is to say, to the extent of your understanding is the extent to which you will be blessed. To the extent to which you understand the word. That's the same essence shall be blessed. Remember, those who understand the word, he said they will bring four fruit, hundred food, sixty food, thirty food, to the extent, to the extent. Matthew chapter 13, verse 23. To the extent. All your blessings shall be delivered to you. I said, All your blessings shall be delivered to you. From today, may
may you begin to see your inheritance in the world. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. He came to Jeremiah and said, What seest thou? He said, I see a rod of an ammo tree. He said, Thou hast wasting. I will hasten my word to do what? Now, what is Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 11 and verse 12 telling us? You know what he's saying? If you can understand it, God will perform it quickly. If you can understand it, God will do what? Perform it how? Quickly. Quickly. If you cannot understand it, you will suffer the pain. I wish every believer would begin to behave like uh, the Ethiopian you know, in Acts in Apostle chapter 8. When Philip came to him, he asked him a question. Understand that thou what thou readest? What did he say? I wish it's, I, I'm sure if it's you, you know what you would have said? I, it is, I don't understand that. After, what is he saying? He said, you shall serve the Lord and God shall bless. He's telling me that if I serve, I will bless me. Sir, quoting it is not blessing. Who? Hello? It's not. Let me advise you. If it is not working for you, convince yourself, I have not known it yet. It works. If I... If he says, you shall serve the Lord thy God, he will bless your bread and water, take away sickness from you. If I'm serving, I am sick. Just tell yourself, I never know that scripture yet. Hello? Because if you understand it, there shall be a reward. And your expectation shall not be cut off. Proverbs 24, 13 and 14. If you understand it, there will be a blessing to it. Amen. Amen. Church, I'd like you to understand that everything you are looking for is in the word of God. Therefore, hear this. Anything you cannot see in the word of God is not the true picture of who you are. It's a lie. So why not use the word of God, whatever you are looking for, and get it out? For example, if the, if the word of God says, I cannot be sick, I cannot be sick. If the word of God says, I'm rich, I'm rich. If the word of God says, I have peace, I must have peace. Amen? If the word of God says, no we perform against me, it's no weapon. Amen? The word of God is the, it shows you the bank of your inheritance. That is, everything you need to enjoy is in the world. Praise God. Amen? And then we saw that the Bible shows us our inheritance. And in the second service, we said, uh, we are what? Ambassador for Christ. Tell somebody I'm an ambassador. Tell somebody I'm an ambassador. Well, what is our heritage in Christ again? Our breakthrough day number one. I'm a fruitful vine. Tell somebody I'm a fruitful vine. I'm not a barren fig. I'm fruitful. Psalm 128, verse 1 to the end. I'm what? Fruitful vine. If the word of God says so, no matter how you feel or think or say, that is not you. I said, that is not you. You are a fruitful vine. You are not a barren fig. Whether in your body, whether in the work of your hands, whether in your business, I cannot be barren because God said I'm fruitful. Tell somebody I'm fruitful. I cannot be barren. Tell somebody else I'm fruitful. I cannot be barren. Well, I want us to round up with a very important one here. I am redeemed as the seed of Abraham for generational impact. Amen. What does that mean by the word of God? When you got saved, the curses in your family stopped to operate. Because by salvation, you have been removed from your family and plugged into the family of Abraham. And there is no curse in the family of Abraham. Amen. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. So if you are redeemed by Christ, you are redeemed from the curse of the law. Be made a curse for us, for it is written, curses every man that hung on the tree. Can we read verse 14 together? One to go. That the blessing of Abraham. 
allow circumstance, listen, that you put your hands in the pocket and it came out empty. Don't use your pocket to disqualify God. Is somebody with me? No. The pocket cannot be the yardstick for your God. God saw your pocket when he said you are blessed. Are you hearing me, somebody? So don't wake up in the morning and uh, no job, crisis at home, and then you say, "Mm, my great-grandfather, that's how he didn't have job. My grandfather too, he didn't have job. As some people will always say, somebody came to my office and said, sir, I trace the history of my father to my grandfather, to his brothers and to everybody. He said, and I discover that it's the same thing that is affecting them. They cannot get married. All of them, they will, they will, they will give them job. Before you know it, they will sack them from the job. My grandfather, they sack him from railway. My father, they sack him from telephone, night air. Now, I've been looking for a job, they sack me. Can I tell you something? Don't use your circumstance to cancel God's promise. No, sir. Tell that circumstance, I am not who you say I am. I don't care how my grandfather lived. I am redeemed. My grandfather was not a Christian. I am one. Even if my grandfather was a Christian, he had no understanding. I have understanding, sir. When I got born again, God cut me off from my family Hallelujah. and plugged me to Abraham. And if Abraham cannot be cursed, I cannot be cursed. You know what Balaam said? How can I curse whom God has not cursed? Tell somebody I'm uncursable. You know that you didn't pronounce the curse, but it can't affect me because him who is blessed is blessed. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law, being made a curse of me, so that the blessing of Abraham might come upon me, who is the gen- who was a gentile. How do you know that? I am of Abraham's seed, verse 29, if I'm born again. Amen. From today, use the word of God to cancel your circumstance. Use the word to cancel your circumstance. Stop, don't stop being a CNN of your problem. Change it. Change it. I can never beg. Not because there is food in my house. Because the Bible says, since I was born, now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg. I've never seen. Listen to this. When you stand upon God's word to practice God's word, you commit God to perform it. I don't know about you. I am. Um, I have the blessing of Abraham upon my life. If you know my son name, you say, ah, the blessing of my father, I didn't follow you. You are making a mistake. That person has left that family long ago. Amen. 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 I, he said, he said, in Numbers chapter 23, verse 20, he said, I have received commandment to bless. Yes, sir. He has blessed. I cannot reverse it. So I have an irreversible blessing upon my life and my children's life. I saw something, was it this week, in scripture, that my generation to the fourth generation shall never be cursed. Because I just saw something in the Bible, in the book of Ezra chapter 20, I think verse 3 or there about, you know what it says? He said, thou shalt not serve any other God because our God visit the iniquity of the Father to the what? Third and fourth generation. But he show his mercy to them that love him to the same fourth and third generation. So if I am serving God faithfully, my fourth generation is covered. Hallelujah. Sir, so I said they are covered. They will never beg. They will never struggle. You know why? What I am doing now is enough to cover them. The scriptures cannot be broken. Because some of us, we are suffering from what our fathers. Uh huh. So we need to detach by ourselves, struggle for ourselves. No, no, no. Your children does not have to. So don't let anybody confuse you. Uh, they, he said, somebody say they can't put something for my child here. Which, my, my child? You don't know the child. You can't put anything on his head. You know why? Before you put the thing, you will meet blessing. 
portion of the upright shall be blessed. Psalm 112 verse 2. Lift up your right hand. I decree, because you are part of this family, whatever is not obtainable in this family that is buffeting your life, I command it, cursed in the name of Jesus. This commission is not a struggling commission. It's not a begging commission. It's a breakthrough commission. I release the breakthrough anointing of this commission upon your life. Yo, yo, yo. Hear me, sir. If you are in an aircraft and the aircraft in an aeroplane and the aeroplane is flying 200,000 above sea level, where are you? Are you not there? Are you on the ground running with the aircraft? No. From today, whatever represents a cost in your life is reversed to a blessing. You are a blessing by Abrahamic covenant. Yes, by salvation, that blessing come upon you. You will never beg again. Just, if you can just believe it. If you believe it, you are coming back with a testimony this week. Yeah. This week. Watch it. You are coming back with a testimony. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Yeah. One day I told God, I said, I can never be in bondage. I can't be in a liberation commission. And one witch is oppressing me at night. Why check every witch? If I believe you get to my address. Mm -hmm. Check her. The list of all spiritual activities, which is so they are two, they are, they are smaller than the smallest. Yes, sir. <clears throat> I say, hey, Pastor, my neighbor is a witch. <laughs> so when I'm going to sleep, I lock the gate, okay. lock the door. Okay. I go anoint my room for a witch. Yes, Check her a witch. How did evil get here? Mm -hmm. Please hear me, sir. Get your understanding from scripture. No weapon formed against me that shall prosper. If you talk evil against me, I bend your mouth. That's what the Bible says. Hmm? Why? It is my right. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 17. I decree upon somebody today, whatever is stealing that blessing that belongs to you, I command them, go down for you now. I speak specifically to somebody you are serving God faithfully. And the enemy is stealing your blessing that it will not reach you. From today, I rebuke that devil for your sake. In the name of Jesus Christ, the blessings of Abraham will come upon you from today. What others are suffering from, you will not suffer from them again. In the name of Jesus Christ. What am I saying, beloved? Please believe scripture. Amen. Now, today is our covenant day of exemption. You will not be exempted if you don't believe in your exemption rights. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's not that God cannot help you, but if you don't believe God, God is helpless. Blessed is she that believeth. And God will perform what he said. As I said in the third service, it's important I mention that again. It's not as if we are living in an age where uh, when we deceive, we are living in a world where there is evil, so there will always be evil. Are you with me? It didn't start today. It started before your great, great, great grandfather was born. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There is always evil on the earth because the God of this world is the devil. Mm. There is evil. But for you, you shall be exempted. Amen. There is no scripture of destruction or evil in the Bible that does not have the word but. The word but is an exclusion from the evil. There is always but. Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 and verse 2. Arise, shine, for the light is come. And what? The glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. The next verse, verse 2. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. Cover what? What is the meaning of cover? It means the whole earth. So that's why you hear it in Ukraine. You hear it in Afghanistan. Now you hear it in Nigeria. It's the same thing. In South Africa, it's everywhere. Cover the earth. And what? Gross darkness the people. But! Tell somebody exclusion. But the law. So people are permitted to suffer darkness. But for you, there's an exception. Therefore, hear this. This is very important. Church, hear this. Don't use the next 
person in front of you to judge what is going to happen to you. Even if the person is more anointed. Ah, if it can happen to a pastor, what about me, ordinary member? No, sir. God does not save by title. God saved by understanding. It's not title. With all due respect, do you know that there are some revelations you have that I don't have? So that's the truth. So those revelations we produce for you, I may preach it, but I won't have the answer. Because God does not deal with us by what we preach. God deals with us by what we understand. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, yes, sir. Are you hearing me, somebody? But the glory of the Lord shall arise upon thee. Darkness cover the earth, but exclusion. The word exemption means excluded. It happened to others, I am out of it. It can happen. And because I know it can happen, even if the next person is a bishop, it can happen to me. I've shared with you one day where my pastor was afflicted. I, all I did was, I just went back home to search the scripture. Under what condition can a pastor be afflicted like this? If I tell you the revelation that came out of that, I came back the next day. I, I had no idea that I had it calling. I said, it cannot happen to me. Somebody may say you are very proud. Thank you. Oh, so I should agree with you that it can happen. <laughs> Not me. I will, this is my mouth. I will never use this my mouth to by mistake corner evil to my life. Not me. If everybody is dying, minus me. Because I saw the word, but, but, there, there is a graphic picture in Ezekiel chapter 9 where God was angry with what was happening even in the church. And God said, it's going to destroy, no pity, and everything. And in verse 6, look at another word, but give us verse 6, Ezekiel chapter 9, and verse 6, he said, slay utterly old and young. Both what? Maids and little children. Women and women out. Come not and women. Where is the other verse? And women. Uh -huh. But if you look at that scripture, he said this is massive destruction. Both old old, young old. He said maid don't know, including the maid. What about you know such children? Kill them too. What job? Including women, you know, kill the women. He said, but, now listen to this, what does this mean? It doesn't matter the massiveness of the destruction, there are still people that will be excluded. Yes, sir. Can you see that? The, sir, he said, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark. By the anointing coming upon you this morning, that same mark that will mark you out for exemption is coming upon your life. When there was evil in the land of Egypt, the children of Israel were exempted. The whole world did evil. God was so angry for evil creating man. What did the Bible say? But Noah found grace. The whole world were going to be destroyed. But Sir, I have come to understand, including any organization, there is always an exemption clause in everything on earth. I decree, the exemption clause for evil is coming upon you today. <laughs> including, sir, not only evil of destruction, including economic depression. When there was famine in Genesis chapter 26, what happened to Isaac? He prospered. When there was heavy famine in Genesis chapter 47, the children of Israel prospered. People were selling themselves. He said, but they have possession, 47, 27 of Genesis. They have more than enough. Ah, ah. Listen to this, church. Listen to this. Never you conclude in your mind that destruction is going to kill everybody. You know, when COVID came, they say, no, so you both started to kill all the black people. I said, could I forget all these things, cook and pull stories. Now, are they the one that created the blacks? The question is this, very good. How many of them died? How many of us died? We know that, we know that, we know that. All those figures want to give them a lie, not to collect money. It's them, them that died. Because we saw them 
slept in the hospital. We know die. We know die. <laughs> Amen. Because when you see the ratio, you know that it was, it was a child's play here. You know why? No demon have the right over your life Amen. when God is with you. Hallelujah. However, let me round up with this. Pastor, what happened? Are you saying that everybody that died is because they don't have a special right? They all have. Especially if you're a believer. Every born again child of God have that cross of exemption. Sir, quote me. Every born again, because that is foundational for exclusion. Every born, even if you get born again today, yes, that is that exclusion mark for hardship, mm. for death upon your life. Amen. Because you are Abraham's seed. But the question is that why do we still suffer what the world suffer? Why do what affect others? In fact, why does it affect some of us more than them? It is because of what we know and do. Amen? For example now, you, are born, you must be born again. We said something in the first service that will just premise it for there we continue. One of the ways to enjoy this exemption right is, number one, you need divine presence. You must secure divine presence. If God be for you, Romans chapter 8 verse 31, who can be against you? Psalm 91 and verse 1, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow. Psalm 114 from verse 1 to the end, when Israel went out of Egypt and the children of Israel from a strange country, Judah was his sanctuary. The sea saw it and fled. River Jordan was driven back. The rest he fled. He said, what a let thou, O thy sister, that fled? What a let thou, River Jordan, that fled? He said, tremble thou at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob. Which means, when God is for you, Satan is afraid of you. Yes, sir. So you must secure God by all means. The reason many of us suffer evil is that God is too far. We are driving God away by the way we live our lives. Because the moment you do what God says you should not do, you, you move God out of your life. Jesus Christ said in John chapter 8 verse 29, the Father who sent me is always with me because I do always the things that please him. Amen, somebody. Secure God. I will say number two, walk in the reality, in the understanding of your divine exemption. Walk it. Be conscious of it. Hello? Be conscious. We call it be conscious of the revelation of your exemption, sir. Amen, somebody. Oh, many Christians are not conscious. That's why many of us, cockroach make us to pray. Cockroach. 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 You just woke up and lizard run out of your door. Hey, the blood of Jesus Christ don't finish. And when people are there, they'll say, mm, this man is very spiritual. Not lie. He's pleading the blood out of fear so it won't work. You know, there are a lot of things we do when you see the person. Say, ah, I like this brother. He's very spiritual. Especially some sisters. If you marry because the brother is spiritual in church, you soon marry a devil. You see, I like the way they pray. Why? When they just raise kingdom and master prayer, it's only, hey, in the name of Jesus. This kind of person I want to marry. Ah. He didn't say you shall know them by their prayer. <laughs> by what? That's not fruit. That's activity. So what am I saying? Your divine exemption right does not submit to your gymnastic. It submits to your what? Knowledge of your exemption, sir. Sir, let me tell you why I could tell, tell my colleagues when I was in school that what happened to my pastor cannot happen to me. I went back home and studied Isaiah chapter 54 verse 17. Let's take it from verse 15 to verse 17 to you very quickly. Isaiah chapter 54. Church, I'd like you to understand this scripture. I wish, just understand it. Behold, they shall surely what? When people gather against you, it's not a 
prayer point. They are fulfilling scripture. He said, but not by me. And because I didn't send them, I will fight for you. Please, I beg you, may grace to you, for you to be a word addict fall upon your life. He said, whosoever shall gather together against thee, they shall do what? From today, any gang up against you will fall on your head. That's scripture. When we pray those kind of prayers, we are not praying them at It's the Bible we are just quoting. And because it's the Bible, he will perform it. Why? The next verse, verse 16. I have created, behold, I have created the smith that blow the coal in the fire and that bring up all the instrument for his work. And I have also created the waster to destroy. So I have wasters. So anyone that wants to destroy you, I have created waster to destroy them. Is there. Well, my emphasis, verse 17. Let's memory verse. Uh -huh. No, what? Amen. May the Lord give you understanding of this scripture. You will just see devil and just ignore him. You say, devil, anything you want to do it. Because whatever you do is called a weapon. And no weapon for me against me shall prosper. Go ahead. Go ahead. You are in trouble. He said what? No weapon formed against me shall work. Huh? You know the meaning of no weapon? No weapon means no weapon. In fact, the message translation says the weapon that, that can be created by man cannot affect me. No matter where that weapon is fabricated, no matter where they try to form it, he said there's nothing like that that will affect you. Amen? But no weapon that can hurt you has ever been what? So what means anything they forge can hurt you? Because the one that can hurt you have not been formed. Has not been created. So I'm at rest. Amen? Take us back to the next, to King James. Let's explore King James quickly. He said what? No, we perform it. And I said, and any tongue that shall rise up against thee in judgment, which means anyone that will stand anywhere to spoil you, spoil them. They want to spoil your name, spoil them. Lord, whatever they will say, turn it to foolishness. Condemn them. Lord, every report they have said against me that is making me go to court, Lord, overturn it against them. The next day it is cancelled. Condemn it. Why? I know most of us stop here. But we don't continue the next two phrases. Amen. He said, this is what? Ay, 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 ay. Holy Spirit gave us understanding. What is the meaning of heritage? Eh? Oh, so for you to condemn any person is your right. So if you don't use your right, what happens? The enemy will prevail. From today, go and use your right. This is the heritage. This is the right of the servants of the Lord. The servants of the Lord in the Old Testament is the redeemed in the New Testament. Yeah. But you don't know that you think it's pastors. Is the redeemed. This is the right. This is your right. No weapon. Then I started asking God, what about if they sin? Because you know, say the government by, by Bible by passion. I don't understand that yet, too. He that breaketh the edge. What is the meaning? Eh? Bible student. Do you know the meaning of that? He that breaketh the edge, the serpent. What is the meaning now? How many edge have you broken? How many serpents have beaten you? Ah, glory be to God. In the highest heaven, glory be to God. In the highest, amen. Why? For his mercy endureth forever.
pay for his mercy. His mercy. So I said, God, maybe the pastor that which is beat in the night committed sin. He said, look at the next verse. I don't protect the pastor because of his righteousness. Mm. His righteousness is of me. Yes, sir. That is, I am not going to give you an exemption right because you are right. Mm. I am not going to give you an exemption right because you sow seed. No. He said, I am going to do it for my name's sake. Mm. Their righteousness is of me. I am going to look at my righteousness to make sure that no will perform against them shall prosper. Because if I am to look at their righteousness, the enemy will cause them to sin. So God said, I know the wickedness of the enemy. So I'm not going to judge you by your righteousness. He said, their righteousness is of me. So when Satan come, Brother James qualified to be dead. Let me go and deal with him. He said, what did he do? He said, because Brother John committed fornication. God just flipped and said, I'm not, I'm not going to save Brother John because he was righteous. I'm saving him because of my own righteousness. Yeah. Satan, you can't shoot the arrow. Yeah. Otherwise, all of us will not die. Yeah. For his mercy. So when you break the edge and Satan wants to strike, every time you break the edge and Satan says, let me strike, Jesus Christ says, I am walking by the righteousness. Let my righteousness cover for them. What? When I saw that in scripture, I said, Jesus Christ, you, your love is, your love is kind. Your love is patient. You feel my heart with so much peace. Hey! You are amazing. Lord, no man can understand you. You, my life, feel brand new. Hey! Jesus, Too much, too much, excess love. Hallelujah. I decree any weapon formed against you shall not prosper. Every arrow of death by reason of your mistake I command it back to sender. Anyone suffering from any evil by reason of his or his mistake I decree the mercy of God to prevail for you. In the name of Jesus Please be seated. So listen to me. Believe the exemption right of God. Don't let the devil destroy it. Amen. Pastor, are you saying we should be committing sin? He that committed sin is of the devil. If you are given to committing sin without remorse, you are not a born again Christian. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, it's different. Amen. When a born again Christian falls into sin, he repents immediately. Because something inside him just goes off. Yeah. He feels remorse. Yeah. He's not happy. Yeah. But for you to come in sin and say, mm, it no matter, everybody they do and make where go, you are not saved. You are not. Is somebody with me? So, so carry an understanding of your, of your exemption. Tell somebody exemption. exemption. He said, behold, I've given unto you power to tread upon snake and scorpion and over all the powers of the enemy. And what? Nothing shall by uh, it appear that word and nothing shall by mistake. By mistake, uh, supposedly by mistake, uh -uh. and nothing shall by mistake hurt you. Yes, sir. Yes. So mistake is not there in the realm of the kingdom. Hello. Well, number three, fear not. Tell somebody fear not. Number three. Tell somebody fear not. Fear not. Anytime you are afraid, you frustrate the plan of God for your life. So fear not. Are you with me now? Fear not. Job said the things which I was afraid of has become of my history. Job chapter 3, verse 25 and 26. Fear. Listen to me. Don't allow things around you bring fear to you. But rather, rather let them drive you to scripture for your confidence to be boosted. Fear not. Fear not. Fear not. And fear not. Instead of fear, trust God. <laughs> Do what? <laughs> From where we read. They that put their trust in the Lord shall be as what? Mount Zion.
child that cannot be removed. Fear not, rather trust God. Let me round up with this because of time. Love God. Tell somebody love God. When you are truly a lover of God, his eyes are upon you perpetually. And when God's eyes are upon you perpetually, no man can do you evil. Yeah. Tell somebody love God. Yeah. Now, if you read Psalm 91, which some people used to quote, just, just read it. The cardinal statement in that passage is found in verse 14. Psalm 91 verse 14. When a thousand by this side, ten thousand, nothing shall come here, I will cover you with my feather. Look at verse 19. He said, because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him and I will set him on high because he had known my name. So all this exemption is because he has set what? His love. His love upon me. Because he loved me, I am committed to exempt him. Mm. Noah, he loved God, isn't he? So it's clear. I love something in the book of Joshua chapter 6 about Rahab. Rahab was not destroyed because he, she demonstrated her love for God. Even though the Bible called her Rahab, the harlot. Can you see, this? Can you see the name of his father? The harlot. But the name of his father, the harlot, did not stop her exemption. Why? Because it doesn't matter who is his father. In quote, she loved the Lord. She protected God. She preserved the spy because they were from God. Sir, let me submit here. You cannot love God and go down in life. You can never love God and go down in life. Let me conclude by giving you an, an example. You are a very rich man. Eh? Very worthy. Will your wife be begging on the street? If you love your wife. Eh? You have four cars. Then your wife should be a chicken can of pepper. And you say you love him. Ha. Eh? I love my wife so much. I have four cars. You see, I can't give one to my wife. Huh? Because if I give her one, she will spoil it. That's why I love make, I love her to be entry keke. That's a proof of my love. Okay, you are laughing now. If man with ordinary sense can think like that, how much the God who created you, when he, you love him, he demonstrates his love by preserving you, sir. Can I tell you, church? Church, I beg, love God. Love God. Let it show. I'm not talking about the, the choir singing, you know. I love you. More than any. <laughs> I, Lord, I give my. What is the word? I give my heart to. I give myself to you. The call for choir practice. I beg, I beg, I beg. I beg. I beg. I beg. Doesn't, can you see it now? So see. Now every time it is so see. Now every time. Even God knows that I don't try. The one you love. I hope the one you love, there is no limit. One of the proofs to know that you love somebody, there is no limit of what you can do for that person. That's why Jesus came and died. Because God loves us, there was no limit of what he cannot do. He said he gave his only begotten son to prove that he loves us. Beloved, I beg you, please love God. Let it show demonstrate your love. Let everybody around you know that you love God. Exactly. Let everybody know. Let it show. Let it show the way you relate with God. The way you handle God, God, God things. The way you handle the world. It's a proof of your love for God. Just love him and he will love you in return. Can't you see what he said about those who love him? Romans chapter 8 verse 28 and we know. Tell somebody we know. We are not guessing. We know that how many things? All things work together. For good to them that love. Not everybody. To them that love God. Not everybody. To them that love God. I decree you the love of God upon your heart today. Please take note. Exemption is your right. 
shall be exempted. I remember we did one of those ordinances in Abuja one time like that, and somebody was sharing his testimony. One of these road safety guys who there was an accident on the road and they sent them to go and clear the road. While they were there clearing the road, clearing the road, he just received a phone call. Eh? So he just stepped aside to receive the call, you know, because the road there was a noise. The moment he just said, Hello, 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 who is calling? All he had was a noise. Bam! Another truck has come and cleared all his colleagues. That we are helping to what? Tell somebody the exemption. It's real. After the whole thing, they call that number to Jesus call. It's not reachable. It can't be reachable now. When angels call you, which network did they call you? Tell somebody the angels still exist today. I want to speak to somebody. The angel of this commission will preserve your life. The angel of this commission will preserve your children. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, exemption is real. It's real. It's real. The death that Satan has planned for you, his children will fall into it. Amen. You know, one of our members too, he was coming back one day, stayed in the park for two hours before the bus gets filled. And he said, okay, let me go and take cook. This God and the van arrange you. He is going to arrange your escape from evil. Yeah. Okay. The bus is almost full. It's not you want to go and drink coke. Sometimes it's in our sister's door. Sometimes it can be very annoying. You have been waiting, see, so you didn't go and drink coke. Now you are hungry. She went and buy coke to drink. And by the time she came, the bus is full. And then, where she was seated, just behind the, the other door, the driver's side, somebody has had the one man. Say, said, ah, oh, Ghana, here I sit with you. Say, ah, did I see you there? He said, this is where I was sitting. Go back. He said, I know they go back. And everybody in the vehicle said, sir, we met this young lady here. That is her seat. Call, call remove me now. Call remove me. And because she didn't want to waste time, she reluctantly went and sat at the back. Sir, not up to two hours' journey. A truck came and divided that bus into two. Just in Oshu State here. And cut the bus from the middle and carried the head run away. Can I shock you? The only survivor are the four people at the back. In fact, the person that sat where he sat died instantly. Divine exemption, sir. I prophesy to somebody. Any death that they organize for you or your children or your husband or your wife, I decree it be replaced by the wicked. <laughs> Hear me, sir. The anointing coming upon you is the anointing for the mark of exemption. No evil shall come near you. As the Lord liveth, hear this. Every arrow they will target against you from today. As this anointing come upon you, anyone where you go use the leg waka, go native doctor or anywhere to mention, hear me, hear me, sir. To call forth your name for evil. Father, the God of this commission, we cause them to appear to strike themselves. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can I tell you something? This anointing will not only exempt you, it shall become anointing for judgment. Yeah. Judgment against your enemies. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Just believe it. Listen. Exemption does not only cover death or evil, including finances. Watch it therefore. From today, God is going to remove your name from a borrower. I said your lack and want come to an end today. In the name of Jesus. Since I was born and now I am old, I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed bad bread. In this economic crisis, I decree supernatural supply. So you are not, not just there, but any other evil. Financial crisis, you shall be exempted. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Any other evil. Students, you are writing an exam. They say, people fail. Oh, just ask one question. How many people pass? They say, now, let three. Relax. My name is yeah. My name is The covenant does not permit.
permit failure. He said you are 10 times better. I don't know whether they call it jump or whatever exam they call it or residence in your medical field. The next exam you will write, you are coming forward with good success. This anointing will exempt you from failure in the name of Jesus. Bring out your bottle right now. Bring out your bottle of oil, everyone right now. Male kote shalaba. The mark of exemption is coming upon somebody. The mark of exemption is coming upon somebody. Hey, shako telia, zizunta rabalia, elendo zegare kata paleanda lia, marete lebundo zege ya rabalaba. Can I tell you something? Your show shall be exempted. Your house shall be exempted. Your children shall be exempted from every form of evil and decadence in the name of Jesus. Your shop shall be exempted from destruction. Your business shall be exempted from failure in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, breathe upon this all. Lift it up, lift it up. I decree that the content of this bottle and every oil here be turned into holy anointing oil. Holy Ghost, let it not become ordinary oil. Let your power enter into it. And as this oil come upon everyone, Lord, let the mark of exemption from evil, from lack and want, from failure, from destruction, come upon everyone now in the name of Jesus. By this anointing, hear me, you will return back home and you will see testimony waiting for you. Hey! Whatever has been stolen from you, whatever has been taken from you, as this anointing come upon you, there shall be restoration. Man. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Maybe your name is somewhere. Hear this. As this anointing come upon you, your name is canceled from that place. Maybe they even took your picture there. Your picture will mysteriously disappear from every evil altar. Mm, 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 mm. As this anointing comes upon you right now in the name of Jesus. By this anointing, I decree destruction to your enemies. So shall it be. In the name of Jesus Christ. Put that oil straight to your forehead and prophesy in the area you need exemption from death, from destruction, exemption from lack and want. Let's go ahead with children. Prophesy right now. No evil can come near me. No death can come near me. No affliction is permitted. No weapon against me shall prosper because I bear in my body the mark of the Lord Jesus. No more trouble from any man. No more lack and want. No more shall my business go down. No more, no more. The enemy shall not exert upon me. Liribu shakata yali gaduri yalaba. Situri yandala yalaba. I am exempted from destruction. Accident, death, plague, sickness, lack and want. I am exempted right now. Seketo parayaba. By this anointing, my forehead is stronger than that of my enemies. Hey!
from today, you will never fail any exam. In the name of Jesus Christ, what others suffer from negatively, you will never suffer from that again. I decree your exclusion from destruction. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Please take note. This thing is real. You need to believe it. From today, it shall be clear that you are exempted. It shall be clear because your case is different. Tell somebody, my case is different. I'm not like every other person. My case is different. When they are sacking people. Relax, you will not be found there. I said you will not be found there. Nobody will dupe you of your money anymore. In the name of Jesus Christ, so shall it be. But hear me, you need to be born again. You need to be his child, his beloved. He sent his only begotten son to show his love. Do you love God? I didn't say sit down. I didn't say sit down. I'm going to her. Praise God. Praise God. You need to demonstrate your love. You need to be born again. I want to appeal to the church. Listen to this. This is the day of salvation for you. Please surrender your life to Jesus. As men that are not yet born again, you know the life you are living is a life of a sinner. You are, you are doing bad, bad things. You are doing evil things. It doesn't move you. It's because you are not saved. Somebody say, Pastor, I don't like it. I've tried to stop several times. You cannot stop the evil by yourself. You need Jesus. Jesus is the answer to the sin question. If you can help yourself, you won't come. You cannot help yourself. Only Jesus has the answer to sin. That's why you need to surrender your life to Christ. When you are pretending you cannot overcome any evil addiction, you take Jesus to be delivered. All eyes closed, all heads bowed. You want to say yes to Jesus. Wherever you are standing, under the sound of my voice, please place your right hand on your chest. Jesus wants to save you today. Wherever you are standing, put your right hand on your chest with your I pray this prayer. Just come, come, let me pray with you. Please, God bless you for coming.